Hello folks, welcome. This is Spoon TV Live. We are coming to you from the Roberts International Airport. Just behind me is the terminal there of the RIA. My name is Diamond Slanger. You're welcome. We have Rufus Divan Kane, also a former part of the team. Joseph Soko Kone is also a part of this team. So we arrived here at the Roberts International Airport some 45 minutes ago. Um, to speak to the managing director, Mr. Martin Hayes, and his principal uh, deputies concerning the incident that happened last night involving the SN Brussels flight uh, that had a delay in taking off. The aircraft was to take off from the Roberts International Airport around um, 8.30 p.m. last night. The delay did cause the aircraft to take off from the Roberts International Airport some minutes past 10 p.m. Well, we were reliably informed that the managing director, Mr. Martin Hayes, and his principal deputies have been cited to an emergency meeting, a crisis meeting. Our source um, did tell us with His Excellency Dr. George Manning, we are in top brass of his government as well to discuss the situation at the Roberts International Airport. So we did go to his office to confirm the information. We were told by an aide that indeed the managing director left for Monrovia as early as 6 a.m. this morning to be in attendance at that particular crisis meeting. Rufus, yep. So um, we've gathered the information. That meeting is ongoing, as we've been told. Uh, we did see an aircraft on the tarmac here at the Roberts International Airport. Another plane sounds like it's gearing up to take off as well. Activities at the airport now so bustling. You know, we have reduced number of flights coming to the country. Uh, but uh, it seems to be um, there is some level of gloom here at the airport. Like everybody seems to be tight-lipped, you know, people don't want to give out the information. It seems like, you know, nobody wants to talk and talking might just land you in trouble. Yes, indeed. Um, information dissemination is vital as food and water. So basically, this is not time to actually be tight-lipped when it comes to uh, dissemination of information because what will happen here at Tamo is that uh, the rumor will spread wide like a fire and the reality will not be uh, out there to the public. So it is good that um, the information arm of this institution do for utmost best to give first-hand information to journalists and let the world know because this is um, a wide uh, institution, everybody watching and getting to hear last night what happened at the Rabos International Airport was so troubling. So this information needs to go out. They need not to hold back the basic information. What was the cost mm. of the plane not landing last night? So going back to Sierra Leone and we connecting again. Alright, so folks, the plane, the SN Brussels flight in question was scheduled to take off from the Roberts International Airport last night at 8.30 p.m. Uh, but that was pushed to 9.30 p.m. and the plane later took off from the Roberts International Airport at about 10.30 p.m. last night as well. So approximately two hours delay in the flight taking off. And from that video uh, that is viral on social media, you can hear the air hostess um, telling the scared passengers that look no one should come up to us like people um, were getting up going to ask them questions scared passengers as well and she said two things that one they're not getting communication from the the airport authorities mainly the control center or um, the uh, the tower if you want to call it that way uh, they were not getting information from the tower number one and there was no light as well on the runways of the Roberts International Airport. So hence, they had to maneuver and go to Sierra Leone on, on, with low fuel. That could have caused a huge aviation catastrophe in Liberia. And we're not strangers to this as well. Some 23 years ago, August 10th, 1999, then Police Director Joe Tate and five others, I'll give you their names as well, though people said it had to do with political conspiracy and all of that. But on the 10th of August, 1999 we had the police director joe tate joseph tate but known in liberia as joe tate joseph tate 51 
um, Colonel Water Penum, yeah. the father of the late representative Mona, Mona Penum, 55. Army Wear, 41. Cecilia Lewis, 30. Um, Army Flight Captain Joseph Sumo, 42. And Catholic Father Paul Decrell, um, 37. They all died on the 10th of August, right around the Roberts International Airport again. Several reports coming out there was no light on the runway. Others said, you know, it was a political conspiracy that led to all of that. But the bottom line is due to the lack of light at the Roberts International Airport, six persons lost their lives from um, a plane crash. That, that plane was an eight seater to carry eight passengers. And just to tell you that the Roberts International Airport um, situation, this is the second situation in three months happening at the RRA on, on February 20th. This year, a Royal Air Morag flight scheduled to land at the Roberts International Airport at 4 a.m. was forced to abort landing because the runway was dark. And then the president himself, on the um, on the 20th, I'm trying to get the exact date for you. Yeah, on the 28th of March, when the president and his entourage were, was returning from um, Dubai, from the Dubai Ex Expo, yeah. there was a, a, a number of outages power outages here at the Roberts International Airport that night, a video for which Spoon Talk shared that went viral again. That led to the pronouncement of the 23 million. But the question is, are we waiting for tragedy to strike before we take action as to what is happening? This is our only international airport. And for aviation-wise and for business-wise, the lives of people as well, it's not a good thing that the world will get to know that at our only international airport, if you're trying to um, land at the RIA at night or you're trying to take off, there is a huge possibility that you will not have light to take off. And it's a scary situation, Rufus. Definitely, it's indeed a scary situation. So uh, what I think in my mind that government should do, um, take on priorities. This should be one of the priorities when it comes to uh, the nation, uh, because mind you, we have basic two international carriers, mm. Air France and that of uh, uh, Brussels. If we lost the two, just neighboring uh, flags we will be receiving. And it is indeed going to trouble our economy. Mind you, this is one of the areas that we get uh, a lot of revenue, revenue mm. uh, to do other things for government. So. What we need to do here, uh, the authority here needs to do is that uh, to our priority, the government in particular, needs to have priority to the works that should be done at the airport because someone may say this is an old age thing. Mm. Um, you, you may mention of uh, the Taylor's regime uh, because of uh, lack of lights at the airport and stuff like that, you had lives being lost. Now you have come with several examples that has to do with uh, the off and on with the runway lights and the terminal being dark. Come on, this is actually painting a bad picture out there for Liberia. In terms of um, aviation wise, mm. it's painting a bad picture. And mind you, if those who don't have the information, there is an audit ongoing right now. Yeah. There is an audit ongoing right now. And the auditors are here. With this situation, are we meeting up with those aviation uh, priorities uh, to keep us? Our grades have been low since since 2006. 20, yeah, since we, 2006. We, we've been below 20 percent from the International Civil Aviation Authority. Yeah. And interestingly, we have auditors from the International Civil Aviation Authority in Liberia conducting a 12-day audit of our airport security system, our personnel training, safety systems, and a lot of other things. And since 2008, as Rufus said, Liberia, since 2006, Liberia has scored below 20 percent. You need to get 60 percent and above, you know, for your airport to be graded as it has got all of the, the facilities needed. There are eight pillars. Um, that are under the audit regime of the International Civil Aviation Authority. So they're in the country. This audit is to end on the 2nd of May. Uh, they've been in the country since. And for such a thing to happen again, that's a huge dent, you know, for our country. And we're talking about scenarios on the 29th of March. Passengers again were made to use their phone touches 
from videos that were posted on social media again to use their phone touches in the terminal of, of, of the Roberts International Airport. Now we've been told, reliably informed by some of our sources, that hairs might even roll in this particular oh, yeah. in this particular situation as well. This is becoming a total embarrassment, you know, um, to the country that when people come into the country, they are afraid whether or not there will be lights at the runway or not. And interestingly, the managing director of the Liberia Airport Authority, um, Martin Hayes, has said that for a couple of months back, he bought two generators. He's been using his private funds to be fueling these generators. Do Should we be having such a situation for, for such a place that generates a lot of money? We don't only have passenger traffic here, but we have cargo traffic as well. Uh, this place generates a lot of money. You're talking about coronavirus testing. Uh, the money is being generated all from this place. Why should the airport, our only international airport, be faced with the issue of no lights and, as we heard again, speculation again, that yesterday was triggered again by RFI, radio frequency interference. Yes, if we have such a thing again, Rufus, what is, what is actually going on? This is troubling, Damon. This is actually troubling. So, like we said, initially, we need to have priorities. Mm. And this should be one of the major priorities of government. And wherever government can get funding from, uh, they need to put in to get this done. Because this is actually a shame. Mm. I must say it bluntly, this is actually a shame for our country. The audience, can you imagine? Independent still African country. Having this kind of uh, situation, you have other neighboring countries. Uh, Electricity right now shouldn't be a problem for the airport. So, like we, we learn about the solar uh, farm that farm they want that to. There should be a speedy yeah. process so that we lay aside this uh, continuous electricity situation. Seriously, mm. We have Firestone just next door to us as well that runs a mini hydro. Um, they have consistent power flow at their concession area as well and the airport is struggling. Others have suggested the idea that look, um, give Firestone tax breaks as well, give them waivers as well, you know, let them provide electricity to the airport that is going to solve the issue of the runway lights going off and all of that. But the government said in a release, um, in a, a press statement from the Honorable Minister of state honorable Nathaniel mcgill that 23 million will be allocated to go to the runway lighting to go to the control tower you know uh, being upgraded and all of that so if we have something like um as others are speculating that there was rfi yesterday there was radio frequency interference meaning planes that have landed at the airport and those to take off i will face the issue of not communicating with the tower and the tower is definitely not going to communicate to aircraft that are to land at the airport that okay there is an, another aircraft to take off and you have another aircraft landing at the same time that could be a serious 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 um, um issue that is going to put liberia in a very very ugly spot so these things priority wise as you said there are others of the uh, raising the question that didn't the government know that the ria needed major renovations work to be done when the president you know constructed the the invisible park others are saying it's misplaced priority we should look at stuff that will not impact us negatively it's true it's good to have a recreational center but the money that was put into all of that um isn't that a substantial amount that could have been used to solve some of the problems here at the ria now damon uh let us not um uh, every work that has been done uh specifically we say kudos to the government uh, to the president mm. for the invincible part but mind you like you said there are a lot of things that are needed to be done at the airport so henceforth what is now going to be the priority or should be the priority of government um, is to take on these challenges that are faced with at the airport if we can settle this then we can start looking in other areas to gradually because development just don't come so easily. It takes time, but in taking time, you must have priority. We continue to emphasize on priority. You must have priorities. If you don't have priorities, you just lose spend money. At the end of the day, the major thing that you should cater to 
uh, it's just been uh, light in rooms mm. and will cause a serious, serious embarrassment for the country. So this is not yet confirmed, but we're getting information again from our sources that the International Civil Aviation Authority is planning on delisting Liberia you know, as a venue or a destination to travel to. That if you're traveling, you're traveling at your own risk as well. That If that happens again, that is going to be a very, very major blow um, to the country, not just the we are led government, but to the country as well. Because now you have many Liberians suggesting now that look, instead of traveling to Liberia by plane, I'd rather go to Sierra Leone, I'd rather go to Guinea, you know, and then come to Liberia by road. Mind you, for aircraft that are landing here and making use of the services, at our airport they pay charges as well yeah. and if we have a reduced number of flights coming to the country making use of our airport mind you let's be frank we do not have any aircraft calling liberia as their home port we do not have any aircraft no. calling liberia or the roberts international airport as their home port um there was this talk of lone star air so far we're still waiting it's a coming soon we're still waiting but there is no aircraft that calls liberia its home port or the ria its home port so that alone is going to cost us a lot of revenue to be lost when you have the issue of travelers not trusting our airport services again there's going to be a reduction in the number of passengers coming to liberia that's going to cost us huge revenue loss as well so according to information once again we're saying it's, it's still unconfirmed but we're getting information that the International Civil Aviation Organization is planning on delisting Liberia. But what we can tell you as confirmed information is there is a crisis meeting currently being held at the executive mansion uh, between the president and the managing directors of the Roberts International Airport, including um, the managing director of the Liberia Civil Aviation Authority, Chief Moses Scully. We can also give you this reliable and confirmed information that we have auditors from the International Civil Aviation Organization currently in Liberia carrying on an audit that will end on the 2nd of May, a 12-day audit. It involves eight pillars, including personnel training, aircraft training, safety features, security features, and a lot of other things that they take into consideration. And mind you, as Rufus rightly put it, since 2006, Liberia has scored below 20%. The pass mark is actually 60% and above with this happening with us tell me what's that's going to cause to our audit score serious embarrassment and this may lead like you said to uh, us being delisted uh, this is this is something that we shouldn't take lightly it shouldn't be politicized because everything in liberia we have politics to it this is not time to politicize the situation that is now at the rivals international airport Whatever means we have at our disposal, we must give our first hand to get this sorted out so that Liberia, this is the name, is that the name of President George Ria? Is that the name of the airport authority? Hmm. But it is Liberia, the name Liberia. People that are in the diaspora wanting to come back home, if you have Liberia being delisted, what kind of flight would love to take that risk mm. in flying to Liberia? And you have Liberians who are willing, we just had uh, the celebration of the Barca Tenor. You have Liberians now willing to come back home and invest. We're talking about investment. How can they come back home when Liberia is standing a chance of being delisted? So whether you're from the in position, no position, opposition, this is about time. If you have the technical know-how and the government should open her arms, and give listening ears to those technocrats, people who have knowledge about this business, so that they get to, 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 to form part of this team that will sort out the problem that we have mm. at the airport. Now, so the Minister of State did say that a solar farm will be constructed here at the Roberts International Airport so as to provide alternative power source um, to this airport that is constantly uh, constantly experiencing power outages which is not a good thing at all when it comes to priority we should give priority to our ports of entries especially the freeport of monrovia and the roberts international airport the huge question is whether heads will definitely rule you know there have been times instances um under this government that people fought due to what 
is termed as incompetence of some public officials um, or they're not working the, the, their jobs up to a top-notch level that the president would have fired and sacked and all of that. The president said, and I quote, if I'm not going to quote him word for word, I'm not going to quote him verbatim, but he did say, and I'm paraphrasing, he is the coach of his team. He decides which player to set down and which player to let on the pitch. Others are saying Martin Hayes is not doing well, Chief Moses Colley, they're not doing well at both the Liberia Civil Aviation Authority and that of the Liberia Airport Authority. But whatever it is, the president should look at the general interest of the country, other than the interest of individuals. If these people are not performing, if they are the problem to what we're facing now, then the president should let go of them and, in, and employ competent people who will do the job but if they are willing and if they're making efforts in doing the job and the government is not providing the needed resources for their jobs to be made better then the government needs to double up but whatever it is the the, the image of our country currently is at a gray spot i do not want to use back but i use gray and i'm using gray for a reason we can shade it with white for it to become whiter or we can shade that gray with black for it to become darker rufus yeah so um in our wrapping up statements um one of the problems since we've been in the corridors getting information and disseminating information i have realized that like being a major problem is identifying the root cause of issues at the airport we shouldn't politicize mm. the situation. We should identify the root cause and attack it. If you get a tree, for illustration, you got a tree planted in your yard and you just chip the branches of the tree, but yet you have the roots all in the ground. There is a possibility that that tree may extend its limb that you've caught. But if you attack the root, definitely what are you gonna do? You've been killing the entire tree. So if the government and her partners and well reaches possible thinkers in Liberia can join hands with government to find the root cause of the situation at the airport here, tackle it, and solve it once and for all. Liberia will once again be seen as a place of safe haven. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching us. We're wrapping up. I'd like to leave you with this. A stitch in time saves nine. We shouldn't be the country that would say, had we known, we would have solved the issue. This is not just about President We Are. This is not just about the RIA. This is about the entire image of our country. As we celebrate 200 years, Rufus, yeah. as a country being the oldest independent African Republic, we're still struggling to keep the lights on at our own international airport. Neighboring Sierra Leone receiving flights that have been rebounded from Liberia, that is not a good sign. So to President Weah and those making the decision, if the decision is to fire and bring on new people to do the work, then you make that decision. If the decision is to empower those who are currently doing the job so as to get better services delivered, that decision is solely on the president. But remember, President Weah, history is definitely going to remember you in whatever way and whatever decisions that you make. Thank you. My name is Diamond Slanger. And I'm Rufus Devon Conner. Joseph Soko Conner has been our director um, on this um, spot reporting that we're doing. We'll leave you with a picture of delighted RIA due to the sunlight. And we do not know what pictures you see at night uh, once darkness falls. <laughs>